Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, you've reached the Fanatics of Film. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, this uh, early morning, this lovely evening. And my name is Ben, and uh, this is the Fanatics of Film. And with me, I've got some great cohorts with me. This is now. This show is now called The Pandalorian. Um, we've got uh, Billy D. Williams showing up here on this episode. He's uh, he showed everyone how to be become a Pandalorian because you know. We are all gender fluid now, now that uh, just because the mainstream media wants you to believe it so. And uh, I'm a damn well disappointed that Finn and Poe are not in a, a in a relationship together. How do you know for sure? <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just what they're doing now. It's the thing now. It's the it's the it's gen it's generally what it's what the mainstream media has wanted forever. They just want to be represented. They don't want to be... I, I actually did a poll, and the LGBT community do, doesn't want to be representative. They just want hot people in Star Wars. Is that so wrong? What's wrong with having just hot people in Star Wars? I this mean, finally this reminded me of Star Wars, watching this at first. Yeah. <laughs> first little moment, instead of, instead, of, uh, instead of trying too hard nostalgia, nostalgia that's literally trying too hard, I mean, will there be actual stars in your Star Wars film? Is what I was thinking. Hold not, on, hold on. Before we yeah, go on, I just want to make sure that everybody knows when they go on that there's spoilers, because I don't want anyone to get upset that we spoiled anything for them. So before we go on, sorry, Ben, we got spoilers. I don't want to be that evil. How considerate of you, Doctor Evil? <laughs> well, you know, I'm You're evil, but not that evil. You're such a considerate man. Such a considerate man. Yes, here's Not a really. hot, here is a hot and, plate of spoiler filler souffle. Filler <laughs> souffle, that's what you called it. You called it hot spoiler uh, filler souffle. So he pulls this, he pulls this, uh, you know, this reminded me of the of the moment in, in Attack of the Clones, right? Uh, Django and, and Obi-Wan having mm. a little bit of a dogfight in the uh, asteroids, right? No? It was a dogfight between two dogs. <laughs> I didn't see that. I just got the homage to Top Gun myself. Okay. That's right. Okay, what were you saying? Yeah, when, what was that? Yeah, when when uh, Luke was in the speeder and then he he pulls the brakes so the two speeders pass him and then he shoots him. That's what I got out of it. Mm. You guys thought of Top Gun though. Yeah, well, oh, that this... was pretty much the same move as yeah, in Top Gun. I know Gun, I could see yeah, the that, brakes yeah. and then yeah. uh, flies by him and then he shoots him. Mm. Very similar. Him. Who came first, Top Gun or Return of the Jedi? Curl. Return of the Jedi. Yes, that's right. the The speeder bikes they do that. They pull that move on on uh, on Endor. Mm -hmm. So, Ooh. Yeah. you know, is, it, what what is the moment he says? He says, oh, "I could take, I can bring you in cold, or I can, I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold." And then he's like, "That's my line." What was? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Part of me was like, oh, "Is that too?" Is, I don't know. Do you guys <laughs> like that? No, it was nineteen eighties nostalgia action movie quips. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very I'll much so. Yeah. I like that cheese. They should have ended the episode <laughs> there. <laughs> the gunslinger. None of this makes any sense. None of these titles. The gun. They could call the gunslinger any episode. Yeah, it's literally just generic, isn't it? So this this was actually a cool moment. My heart did jump when I saw Tatooine. I, I was literally like, I mean, he says, you know, he says, you know, most likely Porty has some communication, communicate with someone there. And it, it made me realize, dude, they actually did rebuild some of the set for Tatooine for this, which was pretty, it's pretty wild. Like I was, I was, uh, I was thoroughly impressed with that. And if you look at, I mean, if you, you know, forgive me for the detail, but you know, Diehard Star Wars fans, we know exactly what the hell Tatooine looks like, and that is, they they took it right out of A New Hope, man. That oh, looks yeah. really great. So it was a great like it's you know this is right out of there. It's like this that dude that's the same exact shot right there. Right. That's the that's the first frame of A New Hope right there. I mean even yeah, that moon exactly. whatever agree. whatever that moon whatever that moon is that you see to the left that that moon mm -hmm. is in the shot opening shot of A New Hope. May I say that's new moon? <laughs> How were they able well, coming to up here? I think they, pets. I think they rebuilt the uh, cantina set too. Coming up here, it looked exactly the same. How yeah. The hell, how the hell did they rebuild the cantina when they don't have any source material? <laughs> that's right. They have no material. They have no source source material to get from. That's right. They they don't they only have five hundred and ninety nine uh, page novels. They don't have six hundred page novels. 
<laughs> they only have 599 pages. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> they did what they did best. They winged it. <laughs> so, but these are these pages. are beautiful shots. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's they, they use the 1980s coloring book pages for their source material. That's great. I like that DoD. That's hilarious. Got it at Walmart. So, but these all these shots, these intro shots, great bargain. All these shots are great. And then we're introduced to uh, my favorite character of the episode. <laughs> the girl um, from Cheers. <laughs> she, well, <laughs> they insist on putting they insist on putting like regular people. Did you guys yeah, hate her as right. much as I did? Did you guys Dan, hate her? Danny DeVito's wife? Yeah. <laughs> she looked like Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito has talent. I thought this was Masconata. Like before she got old, <laughs> a young Kanata. She ages like Benjamin Button. Before her, before her face, before her whole head turned into a, an orange football, and her eyes turned into buttholes. Yeah, right. <laughs> butthole eyes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It just seemed like it didn't really fit. I mean, maybe okay. Maybe tattooing has changed since since you know. We last yeah. saw Tatooine, but I like it's... her. Uh, I like her chia pet hairdo. <laughs> she looks like she could be sweating to the oldies. Those pubes grew in nicely. Yeah, the drink smashed the carpet for sure. <laughs> it's uh, she's just like, what do you guys? What do you guys think? <laughs> do, do you just feel like she was a convincing mechanic? Do you guys feel like that? I'd like to understand why there was only one. This place looks like it's big enough to have like yeah. a group of mechanics and there was just this one lady the whole time like, really understaffed yeah. i think and like he wasn't a end. think about yeah. how much work uh uh the mandalorian and uh i have spoken guy nick nolte put in you know it was a whole montage of two guys doing shit and she's just just chilling yeah she don't like even have a phrase she don't even have like a i've spoken or anything of her own yeah not that that needs to happen, but it's just it was just pretty pretty silly. All right, let's move on because you know, the, the the crime is that she's not entertaining at all. She's yeah. not a cool character. There's nothing about her other than oh look, it's a it's a woman who represents a certain age bracket what? who doesn't yeah. get normal representation in Star Wars. Well, and that's the first thing that and that's the first thing that you think of, unfortunately, when you see a character that is shoehorned in there that doesn't feel like Star Wars at all, which is what we're getting, which is what we got from the last episode, from episode four. And don't get me wrong, I, I'm i sure she's a good actress. They're prob these, these people are probably really great actresses. They're good at what they do, but it just feels doesn't even feel like Star Wars at all. Like, could you she's try? She's not what she does. She sucked as an actress. And, you know, the real thing is, if the if the empire had just fallen, it'd be kind of a free for all. She'd be somebody's blowjob droid, not running a uh, this this shop that she's running. What's what's her character name? Blowjob droid. Anyway. I'd like to know. Did she put up that decoration? Her name. Her name is Phyllis. <laughs> her name is Phyllis Filler. Yeah. <laughs> Phyllis Filler. <laughs> I think she put up this Christmas decoration of all these, of all these uh, heads. I'm not, who did this? I wonder. It was weird. It was outside her place. Well, and this was the big. Very this inviting was, for people to come in to her I shop. Thinking, that might have been the days of Hanukkah. I don't know. <laughs> it was like it was like trying to make it you know threatening, but it's literally for like a split second. And they use this they use this shot, shot for the trailer to get everybody. <gasps> oh, you know, Game of Thrones and Star Wars merged into one, and that's what we have with the Rise of Skywalker because we're gonna have the end of that bull crap. It's gonna be the end of Game of Thrones. The Impaler. I don't know why, but and then, some you know, of this episode reminded me a lot of uh, Episode Two of Star Wars when they like when Anakin rides off off in the speeder bike and um, Padme's yeah. just standing there. I don't know, a lot of that. That's the vibe I got for this episode. Only Attack of the Clones yeah. was, was yeah. good. All right. So anyway, that's, yeah. The, okay, so she lifts the baby Yoda up, like, eh, eh, what should I do with this thing? Yeah. Uh, she looks like that guy Richard Simmons. Should, that's what I said. She looks terrified. The <laughs> she looks yeah, terrified in that picture. <laughs> she should breastfeed it. <laughs> so bad, man. I don't know what. What do I, what, I, what do, I do with? She's thinking. Thing? She's thinking. Should I eat it or kill it? 
She should child. She should have called child protective custody. I mean, he just left this bloody baby alone in his ship, just all alone, a little baby. What what kind of father is he? Father of the Year award for Mando? Who, why would he just leave him there by himself? He causes trouble. We've seen him do it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It just, I mean, I guess they, I mean, they wanted someone to connect with the, with baby Yoda, which is fine, but it just felt so forced. The character felt forced. It didn't feel like, like it didn't, it took me out of, it took me out of Star Wars. I don't know. 